Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. We especially want to welcome Oscar. Uh, Peterson Beach has our new accompanist, and so welcome. We're glad you're here. I also want to thank Linda for the beautiful flowers today that it's adding to our worship service. I hope that you find today's worship service meaningful, where we'll give God glory and we'll come together at the communion table and be reminded of God's promises in the wine and the bread. 
I invite you to stand as you are. Oh, one more announcement. Um, Melissa's on vacation this week in the office, and I will be here in the office on Monday and Wednesday this week. So um, if you don't get an immediate response or you don't hear Melissa's friendly voice when you call, that's why she's on vacation. So um, I invite you to stand as we begin with our confession and forgiveness of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 654. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Oh God, 
powerful and compassionate. You shepherd your people faithfully, feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear scripture read. The first reading today is from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all of the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Amen. <laughs> We will now read the psalm responsibly by verse, beginning with the refrain and repeating where indicated with the capital letter R. Today we're reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in the green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. The Lord will often go down with the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Our second reading today is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision, circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So we came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Sennerat and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the stick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's hard to believe, but it's mid-summer already. There are still lots of summer activities that I want to do, but either the weather or my schedule hasn't cooperated. One of the things that we haven't attended yet this year is the free outdoor music every Thursday evening in downtown Moline. I've heard that whenever downtown LeClaire has been had live music, it's been packed as well. Many people just enjoy outdoor summer concerts. I have a friend whose favorite week of the year is the Mississippi Valley Fair. It's no longer allowed, but they used to sleep in line so that they made sure to be in the very front row at all the concerts. Uh, that is the last thing that I would want to do. Sleep on the ground, be around all those people for a full week. It's just too much. Well, Jesus knows something about all the crowds. Our gospel reading today began with Jesus and the apostles in the midst of a crowd. Why is Jesus drawing such a great crowd? As you'll recall, a few weeks ago, we heard the story where Jesus sent the disciples out two by two to imitate Jesus, to do the work that Jesus had been doing, casting out demons, curing the sick. Obviously, the news has spread about Jesus and Jesus' disciples and their healing power. People wanted to come and see for themselves, or they desperately wanted to receive the miracle of Jesus' healing. Jesus and his disciples were so busy tending to the people that they didn't even have time to eat. Jesus knew that this was hard work, and he said to the disciples, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. But they were not even able to do that as the crowd saw them get into a boat, and they ran ahead on foot to beat them there. Despite the need for the disciples and Jesus to have rest, we're still told that Jesus had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. I don't know if you noticed, but our gospel reading for today is split into two sections. In between what we read are two other popular stories. First, all those crowds that go ahead on foot to get to Jesus find themselves in a deserted place with no food, and Jesus fed them. It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And after feeding all those people, Jesus sent the disciples ahead again in the boat so that he could go up to the mountain and pray. While the disciples are in the boat, a storm came and Jesus walked to them on the water. He joined them in the boat and continued on their way. Then we have the second part of today's story. 
where they crossed over to Gennesaret and encountered the crowds again. Jesus was recognized and people brought him the sick to heal. We're told though that Jesus not only healed people when he got to the shore, but wherever he went, into villages and cities and farms, people were bringing him the sick. And they begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, because all who touched were healed. When Jesus healed someone though, it wasn't just a physical healing. He also healed those who are shunned socially. When they were healed, they were restored to community. Some other people would charge for medical treatment, but Jesus didn't. So Jesus also crossed over not just physical borders or social borders, but economic ones as well. When Jesus healed, Jesus brings wholeness. Jesus brings restoration. Jesus brings complete healing. I'd asked my friend once why she uses her vacation for fair weeks and for all the other concerts that she travels around and attends. I said, what's so attractive, or in her case, addictive about concerts? Her first response was, I don't know, I just like them. But then she went on to talk about the whole experience. For her, she says, there's something about being in that front row, watching the performer dance and work the crowds. She said it was just something that you have to experience. The people flock to Jesus because they experience something different in Jesus. There's an attraction because Jesus is healing transformed lives. People are changed by an encounter with Jesus. Jesus has compassion for the people, but he also knows the importance of rest for himself and for others. He not only told the disciples, come away and rest a while, but he did it himself. He went away and prayed after feeding 5,000 people. Do we know what it means to rest? The true, true rest that comes from keeping the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. To those who first heard the Ten Commandments, this would have been unbelievably good news. As we'll recall, they were recently freed from slavery in Egypt. You can imagine them saying to one another, you mean we get to rest? You mean we have to rest? Glory, hallelujah. Do you know the rest that comes from keeping a holy Sabbath? We live in a culture and a society where being busy is worn like a badge of honor. I know. I'm guilty. I know we're still coming out of the pandemic, but we're, when we're asked, how are you doing? The answer is often, oh, I'm really busy. Work, the kids, caring for parents. And with our technology, it's even more difficult to take a rest as we can check on our emails or log into the work server from just about anywhere. There's nothing wrong with working, working hard and being good parents and supporting our friends and family, but sometimes we can get ourselves on that hamster wheel of life, and then we don't know how to get off. Jesus said, come away, rest a while. The 23rd Psalm is a favorite, and it begins, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. We often focus on the imagery of the first half of the verse, the Lord as our shepherd. But the first two parts go together. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The whole psalm is about trust in God and God's promises to care for us, to protect us. And it allows us to get off the treadmill of work and the accumulation of stuff and the status quo and notice the abundant life. God gives. 
through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the kingdom of God has come near. God has shown his love through his son Jesus, and we need to come away and rest in that love. Come and bask in the goodness and the mercy and the healing, the reconciliation and the wholeness that Jesus offers. I am convinced that the appeal to concerts isn't just the excitement for the performer, but it really is the whole experience. The people who are with you at the concert, the acoustics of the venue, the fact that you're all experiencing live performance at the same time. In a similar way, I think Jesus had come away and rest a while because it was his own personal practice where he knew and experienced the love and grace of God. He wanted the apostles and he wants us to experience the goodness of God to experience healness, forgiveness, and reconciliation that only comes from a loving God. And if we're just continuing on our own hamster wheel of life, we're likely to miss out on what God is doing right in our midst. God makes us lie down in green pastures, makes us rest, so that we can hear the voice of Jesus, so we can experience the unconditional love, the reconciliation and the wholeness that comes from the crucified and risen Christ. My challenge for you this week is to take Jesus' words as an invitation. Come away, rest a while. Spend time with God for your soul to be restored or let the Lord guide you along right pathways. It just might be the experience of your body, soul, and mind that you've been waiting for. let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. 
Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your Church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the Gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. We pray for our ELCA full communion partners, including the Reformed Church in America. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands and oceans. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. We pray especially for the people in Cuba and Haiti who are experiencing unrest and seeking freedom to be governed justly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O oh God. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to all who are ill, especially Daniel, Penny, Dave, Lynn Sason, Deb Sorjahan, Kathy Ion, Erin Ann, Debbie, Pastor Dell, Deb, Boyd, Janice, Sharon, Shirley, and those we name now out loud are the signs of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Unite this congregation, O oh God. Renew our commitment to support one another and revitalize our ministries so that we may mature as disciples and share the good news with our neighbors. We pray especially for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, Norman Sandberg, John James, and Catherine Ion, and for Glenn and Beth Sinkson on their wedding anniversary. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O oh God. We give thanks to all who have died, now citizens with the saints, as you have received them into your heavenly home. So welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your generosity of your offering gifts that are given to Zion. There is an offering plate on the table in the back, and many of you I know give electronically or send it through the mail. We appreciate that. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we uh, prepare the Lord's meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we go from this place, receive this blessing. May our God and the Lord Jesus Christ bless you with love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Love.